Hey, 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 what's going on all you beautiful people? My name is Antoinette Staples and I'm super excited that you've decided to check out my YouTube channel this week. Listen, I know you could be doing anything else with your time. So thank you for taking a few minutes of your day to listen to or watch a video from me. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. If you're new, I want to say welcome. If you're returning, I want to say welcome back. Whether you're new or returning, make sure you hit the subscribe button before you leave this channel. All right, hit the subscribe button. And if this video blesses you, make sure you let me know, write a comment below. I really love to hear from you. Your comments truly bless me. And I thank you so much for taking the time to write me. So I just want to say on last week, I did say that I was doing a giveaway. I will be announcing the winner on next week. So if you want to enter into the giveaway, I'm not going to share the details here. You've got to go back and watch my last video. All right. So you go back and watch the last video, figure out what you have to do in order to participate in the giveaway. The winner will be announced on next week's video. Thank you all for sticking with me. 5,000 subscribers is huge. I've been recording for two years and I want to celebrate with you all for following and supporting. All right. So I'll be doing a giveaway next week. So this week's video is titled God sees you. God sees you. And I don't know who needs to be reminded that God sees you. But I am here to remind you today. Um, and so I pray that this really blesses you as I share this. You know, there are often times when we are in our journey or we're walking in our, our, you know, our lives and following Christ. And it just feels like no one sees us. No one pays attention that we're overlooked, that we're always passed over, that no one even acknowledges that we're there. But I want to remind you that God always sees you. God sees you. All right. And so um, as I was thinking about this, I'm going to hop right in real early today in scripture. Sometimes y'all don't know how late I'm recording, um, but it's pretty late tonight. So I'm going to hop right into the scripture this week. Um, but we're in the book of Genesis and in the book of Genesis, it is 16, Genesis 16. We're going to start at verse six and we'll read through verse 13. And it says this. So Abram said to Sarai, indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, behold, you are with a child and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, have I also seen him who sees me? Have I also seen him who sees me? So here is Hagar in a situation that she did not ask for. Sarah was unable to bear a child at this time. And so she said, Abram, you can take my maidservant. So here it is. Hagar is in a place of affliction. This is something that she did not ask for. She didn't go pursuing Abram. It was actually pushed upon her. But because of that, then she was now hated by Sarai, right? And so Sarai couldn't even stand to look at her. She was just depressed at the sight of her. Why? Because now she had what Sarai wanted. And so I want to stop here for a moment and say, sometimes you feel like you're overlooked because you have what someone else wants. And it may come from a situation that feels like affliction. 
And so it may be in that particular state or present moment that God is speaking to you and he's trying to encourage you that in your place of affliction, you actually are the one that carries the blessing. And so I don't know if anybody is watching the video right now and you're like, Lord, you know what? I feel like I'm just going through the valley. I feel like I'm just going through. I'm going through the storm. I'm going through the fire and the rain and, and all of this stuff is just happening to me. I didn't ask for any of it, Lord. It just seems like I can't just get a break. It seems like I can't find my way out. Lord, what's really going on here? It just seems like I just can't get any slack, right? time after time, thing after thing, all of this stuff is happening and it seems like I'm being overlooked. I feel like I'm in my place of affliction, but here it is. I am truly the one carrying the blessing. Maybe you don't feel like that, but I want to remind you that you might be carrying the blessing. You might be carrying the very thing that someone else desires, but you're so stuck on your state. You're so stuck on your condition that you cannot see that you are actually the one holding the blessing all right and so here it is she flees from her situation and so instead of us learning from the situation that we are in we flee from it lord mm -mm, i don't want none of this i got to go all right and so you ain't giving you haven't given me permission to leave but i'm telling you right now i am going to go it's time for me to bounce all right and so some of us excuse ourselves excuse me uh, with the church finger i'm gonna pardon myself and i'm getting out of this situation and some of us are guilty of that because we don't want to be in the situation that we're in we don't see the blessing because we focused on the curse we're focused on the affliction we're focused on the pain we're focused on all these negative things and so we don't see that god is birthing a blessing inside of us and it might be the very thing that someone else wants but we feel over like we feel like we're being challenged we feel like it's more on us than we can bear so what do we do we flee and we're like you know what Lord I don't want any of this so I'm gonna run away so then the Lord dispatches his angels and he said I'm gonna go have to go after you because you 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 tripping you know what I mean you going didn't nobody tell you to do all that we need to go and snatch you back it was time to bring you back to the place that you were in because you left too soon there's some things that i'm trying to do for you in this place of affliction so here it is the angel goes after Aster hagar and um he finds her there and she, he asks her what are you doing and where are you going she have no clue she don't know where she going but she says all i know is that i'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress sarai um and then he says to her i need you to return there all right you don't even know where you're going you don't have what you need to provide you don't have what you need um for this present moment for this blessing so i need you to go back there Whatever it is that the Lord is telling you to do, you might be trying to flee, but the Lord is saying, no, I need you in that state. I need you in that condition. I need you around those people. I need you to do it in that place. Um, and so he sends her back and then he goes on to tell her, you know what? He says here, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly. All right. So that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord says to her, what? You are with child. You shall bear a son and you shall call him Ishmael. Why do you call him Ishmael? Right? Because the Lord has heard your affliction. And so what I want to encourage some of you in this, what may feel like affliction to you, you need to start calling it the Ishmael in your life because from that place of pain, God hears you. From that place of discomfort, God hears you. From that place of rejection, God hears you. He hears you there. It is the place where you feel like you're isolated all by yourself, where you feel like you just got to run so far away because you just can't take it anymore. That is the place that God hears you. It might be the place where your cries are the most silent, but they're the deepest that God hears hears you so i don't know if anybody's in a place or you've been in a place where you like lord this this is just doesn't feel good this is not a good place and i don't know what to do here and i want to just run away and i want to get far away i want to remind you that you need to call that thing the ishmael in your life because that is your place of affliction and that's where god 
hears you he hears your affliction um, but there's the blessing right that's where the blessing comes from and so then the Lord it goes on and then she says then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her and she said you are the God who sees for she said have I also seen him who sees me it wasn't until she was in a place of affliction that she could see God and acknowledge that he in fact saw her. When we're in a good place, when life is good, when life seems lit, and it seems like everything is going in our favor, that's when we acknowledge that we can really see God in that place. We see that God is loving there. We see that God is kind there. We see that God is faithful there. No, it seems crazy. All right. But she called on the name of the Lord at that place. All right. And she said, Lord, you are the God who sees. Am I also seeing the God who sees me? And so sometimes we feel so forgotten by God. Sometimes we feel like he can't possibly see what we're going through. He can't possibly have a clue. And sometimes because God did not pardon us from that place, we think that God has forgotten about us. We think that God has, is not moving on our behalf, but sometimes it's in that place of pain that you truly get to see who God is, that you truly get to know who God is. And when you begin to see the Ishmael, when you begin to see that God hears you in your place of affliction, when you begin to see that that place of affliction is actually your blessing, then you acknowledge that God does see you. And not only does he see you, but you truly see him, the provider, the confidant, the peacemaker, right? You see him as your joy, your love, right? You see him as the tender and faithful God that he is. You don't always get to see that in a fulfilling place because you might just boast a little bit. You might get pride and, and proud in your own eyes in those other places, but in the place of affliction, when you know that the Lord truly hears your heart's cry, all right, because it may not look around you like he's heard you, right? Because she had to go back to, she had to go back to Sarai and Abram. That's what the angel commanded her to do. And so you might be like, Lord, I've tarried in this place a little too long. I've been in this place way too long. You haven't delivered me from this situation. You haven't delivered me from this seemingly troubled marriage. You haven't seemingly delivered me from this troubled job. You haven't seemingly delivered me from these poor finances. You haven't seemingly delivered me from this sickness. And even in this place, I want to call Ishmael what it is. And I want to remind myself that you've heard my affliction and that in this place is the blessing. It's the blessing because I see the God who sees me. I see the God who will show me the blessing and not only will he just give me a blessing, but he says that I'll give you an abundance, right? The exceeding, I will, I will, um, multiply. He's saying here that he will exceed her descendants will ex be exceedingly multiplied. All right. And so you need to know that in that place of affliction, God will multiply the blessing. I know it don't feel good. Y'all trust me. I understand a lot of us are in our place a little bit longer than we want to be there. We don't appreciate it. God, just so you know, okay, that's another part of the affliction. Lord, I just want you to know you may not hear me here. I feel like you don't hear me here, Ishmael, right? You may not hear that I'm going through, Ishmael. You may not hear that I'm feeling this pain, Ishmael, right? And so God wants to remind us that it's in that place that we need to be reminded that he hears our affliction. What's that afflicted place for you? What is that place of pain for you? What is that place of rejection for you? You know, it's in this season in life sometimes where you feel like, man, Lord, I keep getting passed over. They aren't giving me the opportunities. They aren't opening the doors. They aren't giving me a chance. No one is welcoming, welcoming me. As a matter of fact, it feels like they hate me in this place. It feels like everybody dislikes me in this place. It feels like no one can see my talent in this place. I mean, Lord, are they blind? It seems like they just can't see here, right? But Lord says, Ishmael, call that place Ishmael because in that place, the Lord can hear your affliction. When you acknowledge that the Lord hears your affliction, 
and you are indeed carrying the blessing, all right, then you can begin to say that the Lord who sees, I see the Lord who sees me. You can begin to say, I now see the Lord who sees me. I don't know about anybody else, but if no one else sees me, as long as God sees me, I've been seen by enough. I've been seen by more than enough, right? As long as God sees my efforts, as long as God sees my heart, as long as God hears my cries, as long as God knows where I am and what I'm going through and what I need, and he will deliver me from it, then all I need is for God to see me, and that is more than enough. In that place, I can know that I am not forgotten. In that place, I can know that I am loved. In that place, I can know that I am cherished. For the God who sees me, I now see, right? I see him for who he is. When life is good, y'all, we don't always think about the things that God does for us. We're not always, sometimes you just gotta sit. And I wanna say in the good seasons and the bad seasons, you have to learn to just thank God. Thank God for everything that he's doing in your life, even in the painful places. Lessons are taught there. There is growth there. There are, um, character is built there. Everything that we need in that painful place is there. But more importantly, true intimacy with God is created there. You begin to see who he is there. You know, when you think about yourself in relationships, you truly see people for who they are with how they deal with pain, with how they deal with troubled times, with how they deal with, um, with their burdens, with how they deal with, um, you know, just poor circumstances, the cards that they are dealt. dealt. How do they deal with those things? That truly shows you the heart of a person. And so here it is. Hagar runs away from the situation. She's like, uh-uh. Nah, man. She, she out to get me. Abram then told her, do with her as you please. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, Abram. Now, wait a minute. I didn't ask for this now. She put me in your hands. She literally passed me over to you. And now she's upset with me. What did I do, right? And so sometimes we're in that situation. We're like, Lord, I, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want to be in this situation. This kind of what I was dealt. Lord, really? What did I do? And so, you know what? I don't want to be in this place. So I'm going to go ahead and run, all right? As fast as I can, far away as I can. I don't know where I'm going. I don't got no game plan Lord but I know this ain't it this can't be it you can't have me right here and in the place when you run away when you're trying to run away God says no go back go back and deal with it go back and face it go back there that's where I need you to be but I want you to know that I've heard your affliction so call it Ishmael you're in the season now where the blessing is being birthed but you might be facing some affliction you might be facing some things that you did not ask for but call it Ishmael because that's where the blessing is birthed and that is also the place where you get to see the God who sees you if no one else sees you, remember God sees you. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. No one else matters. And I pray that blessed you today. All right. God sees you. He sees your giftings. He sees your hard work. He sees everything you're going through and everything you're putting forth. All for his glory. Keep it up. Even in your place of affliction, keep going, keep moving, keep believing, keep trusting in that place. That's how he's showing you who he is. And you get to see God the God that sees you. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you're so good, you're so kind, you're so loving, you're faithful, Father. And I thank you that when no one else sees us, you see us. When other people look over us, you do not. When other people forget, you remember. Oh God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you're faithful, you're loving, you're kind. And we thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to see you. Sometimes we don't see you. Thank you for allowing us to see you because it is true that you always see us. And we thank you that you never take your eyes off of us. You never take your hands off of us. And so we're just grateful on this day, Lord. We just praise you. We thank you and we glorify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Lord, I just, um, I'm just grateful and I pray that this blessed you. I pray that as you need the reminder that God sees, God sees you. I pray that I gave that to you today. Don't forget, I'll be announcing the winner next week um, for the giveaway. So you still have time. This is the last week. You have to send me an email. You have to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to my website, and send me an email about which video, all right? So you gotta watch last week's video to hear more details. But I pray this blessed you. Remember, God sees you. 
and that's all that matters. It's time that we all put on our wings and soar.